I welcome you all to the session of thermal engineering basic and applied. Today we shall discuss about the thermal analysis of CI engine. If we recall in the last class we have discussed about the performance of auto cycle and to do that we had to consider several processes those constitute together to form the auto cycle. So, today since we need to discuss about the thermodynamic performance of CI engine and you all know that the processes of CI engine are analyzed by comparing with by comparing them with an the an air standard cycle that means, the processes which are there in a CI engine those processes together constitute a cycle and if you would like to analyze the cycle performance we need to compare that cycle with a standard you know air uh, with an air standard cycle and the air standard cycle which is used to analyze the you know performance of CI engine is known as diesel cycle. So, before going to discuss about rather before going to derive the efficiency or the thermal efficiency of the diesel cycle, let us briefly look into the processes which are there in a CI engine. So, if we draw the uh, schematic of a CI engine. So, we shall discuss now this is you know intake valve and this is exhaust valve. The first stroke is the intake stroke and during the stroke piston travels from top dead center to the bottom dead center while the exhaust valve is remaining closed, but intake is open and fresh air is drawn into the engine cylinder. So, that is the intake stroke. Next stroke is the compression stroke. So, when piston is at BDC at the end of the intake stroke, exhaust valve is already closed, intake valve is now closed and piston travels from BDC to TDC and the air which is drawn into the cylinder during intake stroke is now getting compressed. So, that is the compression stroke. When piston is about to reach at TDC during the end of the compression stroke, both valves are closed. What is done? Fuel is supplied or fuel is injected into the cylinder in the form of spray, and that is what I had tried my best to show the spray pattern. And when piston is at TDC or little away from TDC in the next stroke entire combustion is completed and when the combustion is completed as we know what we have discussed in the auto cycle uh, in the context of auto cycle that it is because of the rise in pressure and temperature of the 
working substance, the thrust which is being applied on the piston face is the re responsible force for the movement of piston from TDC to BDC that is the power stroke. So, this is basically power and sometimes it is known as expansion. So, basically what is happening you know that when piston is at TDC or piston is again travelling back from TDC to BDC after the compression stroke combustion would be completed and it is because of this combustion you know the rise in temperature and pressure of the working substance which is there inside the cylinder will create a thrust on the piston face and that is the driving force for that you know movement of piston from TDC to BDC again and that is the power stroke. So, it is getting you know the combustion gases which are there inside the cylinder is now have is, is now getting you know expanded. So, combustion gases which are there inside the cylinder are now getting expanded because of the movement of piston from TDC to BDC right. And when again piston is coming towards BDC you know before it reaches at BDC exhaust valve is allowed to open essentially to take blow down. So, the purpose is you know to reduce the pressure inside the engine cylinder gas pressure inside the engine cylinder. So, when piston is about to reach at BDC during power stroke during end of the power stroke exhaust valve is allowed to open the sole purpose is to reduce the pressure inside the pressure uh, gas pressure inside the cylinder combustion chamber. So, that when piston is again coming back from BDC to TDC in the next stroke it will experience relatively lesser resistance. So, when piston is when exhaust valve is allowed to open certain amount of you know combustion gases will leave out from the combustion chamber or cylinder and while the combustion gases are leaving from the engine cylinder those gases will carry certain amount of energy. So, it is called blow down or heat rejection and finally, when piston is again travelling back from BDC to TDC intake valve is remaining closed, but exhaust is now fully open and what will happen you know that it is called exhaust stroke. So, the combustion gases you know those are there inside the chamber combustion chamber or cylinder will now you know goes out will now leave from the combustion chamber. So, combustion gases will go out from the combustion chamber or cylinder engine cylinder during uh, the exhaust stroke. So, we have understood all these uh, strokes and if we try to map all these processes in PV and TS plane because we have discussed in the last class to establish the mathematical expression of thermal efficiency we need to map all these processes in different thermodynamic planes. What are those different planes? One is PV another is TS and we have discussed you know that the TS plane is very important you know because the area under the process line in TS plane will you know give us the heat interaction. So, from there directly without going for any mathematical calculation but just by knowing the process line and if we can draw the area under the process line from that plane we can calculate what is the what is the amount of heat being supplied to the system and the amount of heat being rejected from the system from there we can quantify the thermal efficiency. One important part is you know that in the in the context of auto cycle we have discussed that the combustion process which is very important and this process as if is providing certain amount of heat to the system. So, when we had tried to represent that particular process in PV and TS plane in particularly in PV plane that is that is a kind of constant volume heat addition that is what we have uh, discussed in the context of auto cycle. But can we again represent that particular process that is combustion process by a constant volume heat addition in PV plane pertaining to this cycle that is diesel cycle or not that is what I would like to discuss briefly over here. You know that uh, what you have discussed in the context of auto cycle is that when piston is reaching at TDC you know for the auto cycle SI engines you know that it is not a pure air rather it is charge air fuel mixture. So, air fuel mixture is getting compressed when piston is travelling from BDC to TDC 
both valves are closed and when piston is reaching a TDC or about to reach a TDC, we need to switch on the spark plug. And the moment when spark plug switch is on, then it, it ignites the total charge that is you know remaining inside the cylinder in a you know as, as a compressed uh, state. So, so, that particular you know situation you know uh, ensure that the entire combustion should be completed when piston is remaining close you know at TDC. Though it is uh, very unlikely that uh, you know the movement of the piston is spontaneous. So, it is not possible that we can keep the piston there for a while when it is reaching a TDC and entire combustion should be completed. But the assumption of constant volume combustion that is when piston is reaching closer to TDC and we need to switch on the spark plug and the moment when spark plug switch is on the entire charge will be combusted and as if at that time piston is reaching at TDC and it is remaining there I mean during that time. So, momentarily when, is pist when piston is reaching at TDC entire combustion would be com you know completed and as if the volume is remaining constant. So, it is a constant volume combustion, but for the SI for the CI engines or the you know diesel cycle what we are going to discuss uh, you know uh, that is what we are going to discuss today. You know that it is not possible to represent that combustion process by a constant volume heat addition. Why? you know piston will be reaching at TDC. In fact, even if we start spraying fuel when piston is about to reach at TDC, then also it is not possible to mimic the process of combustion by a constant volume, because we have discussed two important things. One is called physical delay and it has two different components. Uh, we have discussed about the ignition delay and it has two components, one is physical delay, another one is the chemical delay. So, these two different uh, delays constitute together the phys, you know ignition delay. So, if we allow even because you know nozzle is a mechanical device. So, it th this particular device needs finite amount of time to spray certain amount of fuel per cycle into the engine cylinder. So, at that during that particular time it is very unlikely that the piston will remain uh, exactly at TDC and the volume will remain constant. Instead of considering that instead of considering the constant volume combustion I mean uh, combustion by a constant volume heat addition process for the CI engines what is you know considered is that piston is when piston is about to reach at TDC fuels you know supply to the engine cylinder is started and the first phase the fuel being supplied during first phase will be combusted and it is because of this combustion you know the there will be certain amount of rise in pressure inside the cylinder. And when piston is again traveling back from TDC to BDC towards BDC entire combustion would be completed and the pressure as if should be you know the cumulative effect of this should be such that the pressure inside the cylinder is remaining more or less constant instead of volume. So, as I said movement of the piston is very spontaneous and you know it is very difficult to assume that the piston will be there at TDC and during that time entire combustion will be completed and this is not possible accounting for this ignition delay, because the supply of total amount of fuel that is needed per cycle is uh, you know it, it is it, it is it is required certain amount of time. Also the if we even en if we can ensure that the fuel is supplied in proper time accounting for the chemical delay that we have discussed it will it will take certain amount of time for the total combustion and at that time piston again will come back from TDC to BDC. If it is the case, we, you can see that piston is reaching towards TDC and again coming back from TDC. So, volume will not volume will not remain constant. So, it is very difficult to assume the process by a constant volume heat addition process. Instead, what we can do? We can assume that the pressure which is being developed during the supply of first phase of fuel that will take part in the combustion 
and it is because of this first phase of combustion a rise in pressure will be there. So, that pressure is such that when piston is again coming back from TDC to BDC, you can argue with me that the pressure will fall, but at that time again second phase of combustion has already started. So, as if the pressure is remaining constant more or less during the entire process and uh, that is why the combustion process of a CI engine is represented by a constant pressure heat addition process in PV plane. So, that is what is very important to uh, remember. So, now if we draw the PV and TS plane that is very important to uh, analyze. So, this is P, this is V, this is S and this is T. So, if we assume this is uh, So, this is V B D C, this is V T D C and say this is the intake process constant pressure air intake and if we say this is point 1 when piston is again coming back from B D C to T D C that is the compression process and that process as I said that we are trying to analyze all the processes using an air standard cycle and that is the diesel cycle and we are assuming that the working substance is behaving just like an ideal gas and we can use ideal gas equation to know the pressure and temperature at the end of different processes. So, uh, this is the compression process and we can we have we have discussed in the last class that this is you know represented by an isentropic uh, compression process. So, the so this is a 1 2 and 2 2 3 when piston is at B T D C as I said that combustion will start, but combustion will last till piston has started travelling from T D C to B D C and as if the pressure is remaining constant accounting for the rise in pressure during both first phase of combustion and last phase of combustion. And this is the point 3 and the you can see that it is not a constant volume combustion the combustion is not represented or mimicked by constant volume heat addition process because volume is getting changed instead, but pressure is remaining constant. And finally, 3 to 4, so this is the expansion or power stroke and 4 to 1 you know that when piston is about to reach at BDC, volume is remaining more or less constant what we need to do we need to open the exhaust valve to take certain blow down blow down of the combustion gases only to reduce pressure inside the cylinder and this blow down process as if is uh, the representative you know measure of heat rejection from the system so basically you know that is 4 to 1 so that is q out so again i am writing 5 so, the points 5 and 1 these two points coincide each other and again when piston is coming back from B D C to T D C exhaust valve is now fully open the 5 to 6. So, 6 to 1 was the constant pressure intake that we uh, did in uh, we have just mentioned and finally, 5 to 6 is constant pressure blow down. So, these two processes are thermodynamically same. So, we need to we have no need to consider these two processes while analyzing the thermal performance of this cycle and this 2 to 3. So, this is Q in. So, constant pressure heat addition and if we draw so 1 to 2 is isentropic process. 
So, 1 to 2 3 to 4, 3 to 4 is again isentropic expansion, 1 to 2 isentropic compression and 3 to 4 isentropic expansion. So, this is isentropic expansion and this process isentropic compression. Okay. So, now we can just go for the calculation of pressure and temperature at the beginning and at the end of each process and from there we can quantify. One thing I would like to tell you, so you can see that uh, this V 4 equal to V 1 equal to V B D C and V 2 equal to V T D C and V B D C by V T D C that is the compression ratio. So, compression ratio R C equal to V B D C divided by V T D C that is what that that is what we have discussed in the in one of the previous classes. Now, uh, so we can now go for the calculation of the thermal efficiency right. One thing I would like to tell you that you know that here process 2 to 3 is basically the combustion process and as if this process is represented in this PV plane by a constant process constant pressure heat addition process and in this process we can see from this PV plane is that there is a change in volume right. So, in this process rather in the process of combustion volume of the working substance is getting changed from V 2 to V 3. So, the ratio of this change in volumes is known as cut off ratio pertaining to the combustion of CI engines. So, if we write in the next slide that cut off ratio beta that is equal to V 3 by V 2. We, we are interested in the specific volume. So, this is V 3 by V 2 and since we are utilizing the ideal gas equation, we can write it T 3 by T 2. So, this is very important. So, if we analyze the first process now, so, the change in there is a change in volume of the working substance during the combustion process and that is what we have discussed that it is very unlikely to expect that the piston will be there at T D C and during that momentarily all the, the entire combustion would be completed. It is not a case for this particular type of engine because the supply of fuel into the combustion chamber which is an essential element for the combustion would require a finite amount of time accounting for the ignition delay and it is because of this delay volume is going to change during the combustion process, but we can represent this process by constant pressure heat addition process and this is a very good you know assumptions that I can tell you because there will be a rise in pressure during first phase of combustion and that pressure perhaps will be. Uh, reduced as the piston is travelling from T D C to B D C, but the rise in pressure due to second phase of combustion will compensate that rise in pressure and as if the pressure is remaining constant during the entire process of combustion and that is represented by this right. So, what we can see from here is that the T 3 equal to T max. So, when the combustion process is completed the rise in temperature is I mean the rise in temperature will lead to the maximum temperature and that is T 3. Similarly, P 3 equal to P max equal to P 2. 
P2 is also equal to P3 because momentarily that pressure is remaining constant and that pressure is almost you know the, maxi the maximum pressure of this cycle. Okay. So, if we go to the first process, so process 1 to 2 that is isentropic you know compression. right isentropic compression compression both valves are closed i am not going to write that and we can write t2 equal to t1 v2 by v1 power k minus 1 so this is very important and okay so i did little mistake here so this would be v1 by v2 so, let me write here like this V1 by V2 equal to T1 into small V1 by V2 power k minus 1. If we go back to the previous slide, as I told you V1 equal to VBDC and V2 equal to VTDC. So, V1 by V2 is essentially VBDC by VTDC that is RC that is the compression ratio. So, this is the compression ratio. Compression ratio. Okay. So, that is T1 into RC power k minus 1. Similarly, we can write P2 equal to P1 into V1 pi V1 upon V2 power k equal to P1 into small V1 upon small V2 power k that is P1 into RC power k, right. And what is the work done? Because this is the compression process, so we need to supply work into the uh, system. So, basically W1 to 2 that is P2 V2 minus P1 V1 upon 1 minus k that is r t 2 minus t 1 upon 1 minus k. Just applying first law for the non-flow system, we can write a first law for the non-flow process. So, first law applied to the non-flow process, we can write that is u 1 minus u 2. So, that is C v into t 1 minus t 2. So, this is the work done. And what about heat interaction? Because the process is isentropic, so there is no heat interaction between the system and surroundings, so there is no rise in temperature. Uh, there is no, no heat interaction. So, basically, the rise in temperature that is there due to compression process, but there is no heat interaction from the system into the surroundings. So, Q 1 to 2 equal to 0. If we go to the next process, so process 2 to 3. And that is constant pressure heat addition or constant pressure combustion. So, this is constant pressure combustion. You have, we have seen that uh, you know we have written beta 2 that is change in volume V 3 by V 2 that is the cutoff ratio that equal to T 3 by T 2 right. What is Q 2 3? Q 2 3 because we are we are interested in the uh, rise rather increase or addition of heat into the system that is uh, I'm, I can write in specific form that is C p into T 3 minus T 2. Why it is C p? Because the process is constant pressure process, constant pressure process, right. So, I can write Q 2 3 equal to mass of air plus mass of fuel into C p into T 3 minus T 2. 
So, from there we can write q 2 3 equal to like this equal to change in enthalpy H 3 minus H 2. What about work done? So, if we try to recall the combustion process for the auto cycle, in that case we could write q 2 3 equal to C v into T 3 minus T 2 that was constant volume process. So, instead of C p we could write C v. Also, we could write that no work done constant volume process, but this is a constant pressure process. So, what will be the work done? Again if I write first law for the system that is for the non flow process, we can write W 2 3 equal to Q 2 3 minus U 3 minus U 2 del Q equal to del W plus d U. So, del Q equal to del W plus U 3 minus U 2 and if I take U W 2 3 here because heat and work these two are inexact differential, they are not exact differential, they are path function. So, if we you know uh, write for uh, if we write the expression for this process 2 to 3 then W 2 to 3 equal to Q 2 3 minus U 3 minus U 2. So, that is the work done right. So, and that is equal to that is equal to P 2 or P 3 into V 3 minus V 2. Okay. So, what I can write over here it is very important to mention that. So, this is the quantity. So, this, this is the heat addition Q in in the cycle. So, th this is the heat addition to the cycle Q in. So, I have written here because I will be using this expression later. Next is process 3 to 4 and this is again isentropic expansion. So, we can write T 4 equal to T 3 into V 3 by V 4 power k minus 1 equal to T 3 into small v 3 by small v 4 power k minus 1. Similarly, you can write P 4 equal to P 3 into v 3 by v 4 power k equal to P 3 into small v 3 by small v 4 power k. So, this is we can you know we can write the pressure and temperature at the end of the expansion process because we know the pressure and temperature at the beginning of the expansion process that is T 3 and P 3 and those are T max and P max. So, we know and this is isentropic process. So, there is no heat interaction between system and the surroundings, but what is the work interaction W 3 to 4 equal to P 4 V 4 minus P 3 V 3 upon 1 minus k that equal to R into R into this is very important that equal to R into T 4 minus T 3, T 3 upon 1 minus k and that is nothing but U 3 minus U 4 equal to C V into T 3 minus T 4 right. So, again if we write the uh, you know that we can write del Q equal to del W plus del U. Therefore, del Q equal to del W plus T U. So, this is equal to 0. So, W 2 to 3 equal to sorry W 3 to 4.
u3 minus u4 right and that is what we have used so that is what we have used over here fine and if we go to the final process that is the process 4 to 5 or 4 to 1 because points 5 and 1 these two points you know coincide each other so if we write process 4 to 5 that is constant volume heat rejection why it is heat rejection because as i said that blow down is taken at constant volume only to reduce pressure inside the cylinder and during this process when gases are leaving from the cylinder those gases are carrying certain amount of energy from the system so as if heat is getting rejected and it is very important you know that second law of thermodynamics puts a restriction that there must be a heat rejection if we need to run the you know uh, run all this process in a cyclic manner so this is heat rejection uh, what we can write you know that uh, so this is constant volume process so work done is equal to 0 we can write q45 equal to cv into t4 minus t5 right because if we go back to the previous slide uh, here so point 5 and point 1 so this is basically uh, uh, you know that T4 is greater than T1 or T5, but I should write this is T5 minus T4 equal to Cv into T1 minus T4. Okay. So, this is the again let me keep this quantity inside a box. So, this is let me write here. So, this is heat rejection Q out right and if we go to the previous slide next process is 1 to 6 and as I said that process 6 to 1 and 1 to 6 these two processes are similar thermodynamically. So, it is we have no need to rather it is not necessary that we should consider these two process in the uh, cycle while calculating because they will automate they will cancel each other. So, even if we consider these two process separately ultimate consequence would be 0. So, uh, ultimate consequence, consequence considering these two processes will be null. So, you know if we go to the thermal or thermodynamic performance of diesel cycle that is equal to W net by Q in that is Q in minus Q out by q in right. So, that is equal to 1 minus q out divided by q in. We are interested in the you know absolute value of this because heat and work these two uh, are in thermodynamics these two quantities are also having certain direction. So, while we are calculating efficiency or thermal performance we are interested in the absolute value of these two quantities not the uh, not the direction. So, that is why I have taken I have, I have written in this fashion. So, if we write so q out is this C V into C V into T 1 minus T 4. So, if we go to the next slide and if we write, so eta thermal diesel equal to 
1 minus q out divided by q in that is 1 minus C v into T 1 minus T 4 divided by C p into T 3 minus T 2 because q 2 3 that is q n equal to C p into T 3 minus T 2. So, that is what I have written over here. Okay. So, I can write that is 1 minus T 4 minus T 1 divided by T 3 minus T 2 into C p by C v. So, we can write 1 minus 1 upon k and if I take T 1 outside T 4 by T 1 minus 1 if we take T 2 outside T 3 by T 2 minus 1. So, again we can write it that is 1 upon 1 minus k and T 1 by T 2 right what is T 1 by T 2. So, I can directly write you know that beta equal to V 3 by V 2 equal to T 3 by T 2. So, this quantity is beta. right and what about T 1 by T 4? T 1 by T 2? Now, I can write this T 2 equal to T sorry T 1 equal to T 2 into V 2 by V 1 power k minus 1 and what is V 2 by V 1? If we go back to the previous slide, V 2 equal to V T D C and V 1 equal to V B D C. So, V 2 by V 1 is equal to 1 upon R C, right. V T D C by V B D C, V 2 by V 1. So, that is 1 upon V 1 by V 2 that is 1 upon R C. So, I can write it. Therefore, I can write T 1 by T 2 equal to 1 by V 1 by V 2 power k minus 1 that is 1 upon R c power k minus 1. Okay. So, we can write it we can write it C p by C v equal to 1 upon k T 1 by T 2. So, this quantity T 1 upon T 2 this T 1 upon T 2 this quantity can be written 1 upon R c power k minus 1. So, I am writing 1 upon R c power k minus 1 T 4 minus T 1 minus 1 divided by beta minus 1 right. So, we can go one step further the next slide. So, eta thermal diesel equal to 1 minus 1 upon R c power k minus 1 T 4 by T 1 minus 1 by k into beta minus 1. Right? So, let me write here we know T 4 equal to T 3 into V 3 by V 4 power k minus 1 and T 1 equal to T 2 into V 2 by V 1 power k minus 1 that we know because process 3 to 4 is isentropic expansion and process 1 to 2 is the isentropic compression. So, we can know we can we, we know the temperature at the end of the expansion you know process and also temperature at the beginning of the expansion process T 2. So, we can write T 4 by T 1 that is equal to uh, T 3 by T 2 into what we can write is V 3 by V 4 into V 1 by V 2 power k minus 1. 
see if we go back to the previous slide v 4 equal to v 1 equal to v b d c. So, v 1 equal to v 4 equal to v b d c. Now, if we go to the final expression that we have written here. So, this v 4 equal to v 1 will get this two and uh, v 1 will uh, equal to v 4. So, we can cancel these two terms. So, we are, we are left with t 3 by t 2 into v 3 by v 2 power k minus 1 and what about t 3 by t 2? t 3 by t 2 equal to v 3 by v 2 that is equal to cut off ratio. So, I can write this is v 3 by v 2 power k that is beta power k because t 3 by t 2 equal to v 3 by v 2. So, v 3 by v 2 into v 3 by v 2 power k minus 1 that is v 3 by v 2 power k and that is beta power k. So, if we replace the value of v 3 by v 2 that is t 4 by t 1 equal to beta power k over here then we can write the final expression 1 minus 1 upon r c power k minus 1 beta power k minus 1 divided by k into beta minus 1. So, this is the thermal efficiency of the diesel cycle and that we can see from this expression is the efficiency of diesel cycle is function of compression ratio as well as the cut off ratio beta. Now, I would like to tell you one important thing you know that I can write this eta thermal diesel equal to 1 upon 1 power r c power k minus 1 into beta power k minus 1 divided by k into beta minus 1. Now, you know this term, this term is extra term we had if we try to recall the thermal efficiency of auto cycle then we will find that the auto cycle efficiency is 1 minus 1 upon r c power k minus 1. So, that means, if we go to the next slide that eta thermal diesel equal to eta thermal auto into this extra term that is beta power k minus 1 divided by k into beta minus 1. right k is always greater than 1 and cut off ratio if we know the definition v 3 by v 2 v 2 is always greater than v 2 always, always greater than 1. So, the you know quantity that we have written inside the bracket is always greater than 1. So, for a given compression ratio the efficiency thermal efficiency of diesel cycle is less than thermal efficiency of auto cycle right these ratios always greater than 1. So, the efficiency of thermal efficiency of auto cycle is diesel cycle efficiency by something and so that something is always greater than 1 right. So, efficiency of auto cycle is always greater than efficiency of diesel cycle and it indicates that constant volume combustion is more efficient than the constant pressure combustion. Why? because for the auto cycles you know we could represent the combustion process by constant volume heat addition process, but for the diesel cycle today we had seen that we could represent the combustion process by constant pressure heat addition process. Since efficiency for a given compression ratio of course, this is for a given compression ratio right. Efficiency of auto cycle is greater than efficiency of diesel cycle which indicates that the constant volume combustion is efficient than the constant pressure combustion. But mind it diesel cycles are you know diesel cycles diesel engines rather you know run with a higher compression ratio with, with higher compression ratios than the auto cycle and hence efficiency of diesel cycle should be always greater than efficiency of the auto cycle. So, to summarize today we have 
discuss about the combustion process in a in CI engines and we had seen that the combustion process of CI engine can be represented by a constant pressure heat addition process which is wh which is in contrast to the constant volume uh, heat addition process that is there in the uh, in, in, in SI engines. And finally, we could establish the thermal performance or thermodynamic you know efficiency of the diesel cycle and we had seen that the efficiency can be you know is represented as a function of compression ratio as well as the cutoff ratio. So, with this I stop here today and we shall continue our discussion in the next class. Thank you. Mm -hmm.